Welcome back, 7th graders. You should have just uh, finished up part two for today. Um, part three is the last part you have assigned for this week. So your learning targets for this part are to focus on how the reintroduction of wolves into Yellowstone affected the elk herds. So you guys will be looking at, you know, in 1995 when they reintroduced wolves in Yellowstone. What did that do to elk herds? So just as a reminder, you guys need to read and highlight. Here's your guys' key on highlighting. And then you'll have a couple questions to answer. So here's your reading for today. In mid-January 1994, or excuse me, five, 14 wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone National Park in an attempt to reestablish the predator in a historical ecosystem after its removal in the early 1900s. Pro reintroduction advocates argued that the absence of wolves had created an artificial predator prey food chain and that reintroduction would return the ecosystem to a more realistic historical balance. These wolves were captured in Canada and placed in a three one acre holding, or excuse me, in three one acre holding pens. One of these pens was located near the Lamar Valley. The wolves were released into the wild a few months later and began to establish territories and prey on large animals, especially elk, which make up 90% of the wolves' winter diet. In winter, a wolf pack will kill up to 14 elk per month. In January 2008, 443 wolves lived in 51 packs in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. So that's the area in Yellowstone and also surrounding Yellowstone. So in, again, in January 2008, 443 wolves lived in 51 packs in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Out of the 51 packs, 11 packs, um, a total of 171 wolves, lived in the borders, uh, within the borders of Yellowstone National Park. So there was a lot living outside and then there was a lot living inside. So go ahead and highlight what you feel is important for the Lamar Valley. Again, nothing more than you'd want to memorize. Madison River Valley and then general information that you might find there. And here are your questions for this part. What impact did reintroducing the wolves have on elk in Yellowstone National Park? So talk about what happened to the elks when they reintroduced those uh, wolves in 1995. Is this information enough information to explain why the lifespan difference in the Lamar Valley and Madison uh, River Valley elk are so different? So again, think about this. If you had different predators or more predators, does that change the age in which these two population would die? Okay, what would that change specifically? Would it be the age in which they die or the size of their population? So I really want you guys to consider that and then tell me if you think that what you just read about the reintroductions of wolf, if that's enough information to explain why the Madison River only lived to about 10 years old, but the um, Lamar elk are living 16 plus years. Okay, that's it for this week. Uh, next week, you guys will do parts four and five. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I'll talk to you soon.